Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of April 21st, almost April 20th, but April 21st, 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me today for episode 116. I think you got it right this time. Is Alex. I practiced. How are you doing? Did I scroll up into the doc and read what the previous episode's title? Yes, I did. But Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got it right, though. I knew how to add one to what it was written there. Alex, how are you? I'm good about yourself. You look, first off, you look great. You got the tank top on. Yeah, it's hot. I see that you're stepping away from the kind of all black shirt blending in with the beard look you've been sporting yeah. for the last two weeks that i've appreciated but i honestly I haven't even the noticed look. that i haven't even noticed it but like yeah no i i i even thought about changing i was like ah, i'm wearing a tank top should, should i do this and i'm like eh, i'm not changing we call it the tank. steve jobs look that's what we did mm-hmm. thank yeah, you so i don't want to be steve jobs anymore <laughs> thank you so much for joining us <laughs> achievers this is a great a great day it's a great day here in georgia it's very sunny and i'm very happy about that we got a regularly scheduled episode for you. Nothing too crazy today. I'm very excited to talk about a couple of these. Um, of course, we're going to get into rapid fire. But before we do to that, Alex, I ask and start this very podcast every single week with a singular question. Then I ask you, what have mm-hmm. you been playing? So I've been on a From Software binge again. Oh, it's so unlike you. Yeah, right. It's so unlike you. I even put in my wish list on Amazon uh, a uh, from soft shirt, and one of them says "You died." And then I'm trying. I'm tr- currently looking for a just a from soft shirt. I don't know why. I just want the the from soft. Yeah, you just want from software. Logo. Yeah, no, yeah. I get that. It's a nice uh, shirt. But mm. other than that, I mean, I played a little bit of WW2K22. Yes, we have. That is something that. new that we've been playing, yes. and I also played it and finished the showcase mode. This is something yes. I didn't think about playing, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was one of those things where you saw a bunch of people playing it. You got hyped, and you're like, you know what? Let me try it out. It was on sale. Let me try it. Only fifty bucks. It wasn't yeah ter- terrible. I definitely don't regret paying for that. That was very fun. I enjoyed. No, no, I right? played the showcase mode this year's Rey Mysterio. So every year they kind of pick a person and they go through their career. Um, mm-hmm. Quick, I will quickly add. Uh, as like a a quick kind of review for the game, it won't take too long because there's not too much to talk about the game, honestly. But uh, I do wish that the career, sorry, the uh, showcase mode was longer. I feel like I blazed through that. I I beat I it, mean, I believe, in three hours. <laughs> like yeah, I, we're talking. I this thing was pretty short. quick as well. And this is actually my favorite thing about the games is the mm. showcase mode because you also get documentaries. But this one was yeah. very short. Now, I don't know if you've played the other ones, Alex. But the showcase modes are generally a little bit longer, and you get kind of a wide array of people talking about stuff. But it was mm-hmm. really just Ray talking, and it was only a few kind of snippets. It about him. It, I mean, which, like, is, which is fine, but fine, yeah. it was just so quick that you, you didn't really get, like, the the breadth of, like, the situation. You got kind of, like, a... Uh, a, a very short kind of, hey, this is what was going on. Uh, this mm-hmm. is why it was a big deal. Here you go. Go into the, go into it. Beat it. Okay. Now we're on to the next one. This is why it was a big deal. This is why you're gonna. Like, so I hope next year they learn that. Hey, let's make this a little longer and let's. It's really. I mean, I I love the documentary stuff. So like, just just really get some people sit down and talk about what was going on in time. My yeah. favorite one still remains to be, I don't even remember the year it was, but whatever the Attitude Era one was, because that was hu- oh. that was a huge game. Like, you went from, like, I think it was, like, 85 to, like, 97 or something like that. Like, you went, mm-hmm. like, a, like, a decade of WWE, and it was awesome. It was oh, so fun. I, w- I hope they can do something like that next year to make it better. But I've been talking too much, Alex. What did you, what do you... Quick snippets about the game. What, what do you like? No, I, I actually I enjoyed it. I didn't think I was going to pl- stick with it. Yeah. And um, I was just like, oh, you know, I'm, I'll am i play it for a little bit. And then I'll just 
you know, go back to what I was doing. But yeah. I actually, I was, I thought about it. I was like, you know, I was actually having fun because last couple of wrestling games, I mean, I feel like I suck at the game. Yeah. So like, yeah. So like after going into this one, I'm like, okay, I got it. This was this. I I, I could keep playing this, and yeah. it was really fun. It's a little deeper than normal. Uh, I already forgot what it used to be like, but if I remember right, you had to. There was like. Like, you would grapple them, and then there were certain buttons you could hit. Each thing did something different. Like, Y would do something, X would do something, A would do something, and B would even do yep. something. So, like, it was it was a lot, whereas this one, it's both simplified, but also a little more complex, where, like, there's a grapple, then there's, like, a light grapple, then there's, like, a mm-hmm. light attack, there's a heavy punch, yep. then there's heavy grapples, then there's... Like, it sounds like it's, like, too much to do, but, like, it wasn't, it, it, was, it was not bad. It's easy to pick up. Like, you hit you yeah. hit B to grapple someone, and then you figure out, all right, I want to do a heavy, I want to do a light. You can do combos, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Like, you can hit XXA, that'll do a p- combo. XXAB will do a combo. Like, I enjoyed mm-hmm. the combos, too. Uh, all in all, pretty good game. Do I recommend it? Uh, I recommend it to wrestling fans. Like, if yep. you're in, if you're into wrestling, I mean, no brainer. You probably already bought it. Let's be honest. For sure. If you're not a wrestling fan, no. But yep. if you are like me and a lapsed wrestling fan, and you only really watched like from 2000, what? I was probably watching around 2008 to 2014 ish time. I something you know, something around there. Yeah. I think you enjoyed the game too. It was it was a fun kind of honestly a nostalgia trip because a lot of these matches of Rey Mysterio I watched, so it was really cool. Yeah, no, yeah, I did, I thinking about it like I'm like, damn, I was like I remember this fight like this was awesome. Yeah, they specifically like like the ones with Batista. I was like, God, I I remember watching all of this happen. Like this yeah. is awesome. So it yeah. was really it was a really cool thing to kind of sit down and reminisce about. Yep. Alex, rapid That's... fire. So this is only one rapid fire because we have actually a lot of rumors this week. The only rapid fire I'm going to bring up, I just wanted to quickly talk about um, if you are interested in like Marvel movies and things, you'll notice that Thor Love and Thunder had a trailer. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm bringing this up is around the same time they announced that in Marvel's Avengers, they're going to be adding Jane Foster as the mighty Thor. It's their next Mm -hmm. character. So that's going to be the next hero on all platforms. They gave no other details. So we have nothing else to to know. But Jane Foster will be the next hero in Marvel Avengers, which is very cool. Uh, But Mm -hmm. also, uh, I imagine that game is not going to be going for much longer. So that's also sad. I wish it was uh, better, honestly. Yeah, So, So I could play it, but... It's yeah, not. yeah, it's it's crazy to me that to think I'm like, man, like what happened to that game? Yeah, I mean they made a they messed up a Avengers game. Like it kind of feels like that's the easy one to do, but it wasn't clearly. It they yeah. messed it up too bad. So it's a shame. I do hope the best for the devs. Clearly, Crystal Dynamics now has a lot on their plate with you know helping with Microsoft and all the other projects that we talked about too many last week. So the dev for this will slowly wither away into nothing sad but that's what's gonna happen rumor roundup for the week we're gonna start with sonic origins was leaked but was also then uh quickly announced and kind of elaborated on so there's a huge drama in the sonic community alex Mm -hmm. that we were just talking about it recently yeah that you and you and i were gonna talk about but also it's very it it, it's pretty funny because this has happened before Mm-hmm. So it's funny to kind of put two and two together with with these types of things. So Sonic Origins was leaked. It was leaked via a New Zealand and Australia PlayStation Store listing, uh, and this uh this is coming out June twenty second. Now, why did fans be upset? Well, they pulled an anthem. Now, what I mean by this is, if you remember, oh, in no. anthem, they made because they had so many editions of the game, they made a giant DLC chart. And there was like seven different copies of the game and there were like, it was a chart of like, you know, the X here means you get this X here means you get that Uh, for audio listeners. um, Literally, they made a DLC chart that full on has like everything in it. And it's it's three, six, nine, it's nine uh, rows long and there's five different versions of the game. Now, the issue isn't like, oh, there's cosmetics and things like that. Like, there's things that you have to pay for. For instance, mm-hmm. you have to pay for a hard mode. So, like, to be able to play hard mode, you have to pay for it. 
if you want um, certain animations and things of that nature that have like classical music and things like that you have to buy a pack for that which is coming soon or you have to buy like the big digital deluxe version to just get everything and this brought a lot of people up uh to make uh upset because frankly it's way too overly complicated like why are there one two three four so there's a standard edition of the game there's the deluxe edition of the game and then there's three packs for the game and people mm-hmm. don't like that yeah now alex we've played a lot of i would say modern online games which have had these situations where there's millions of versions of the game mm-hmm did this ever bother you? We're not Sonic fans, so we can't really speak to why people would be upset about this. Now, they do have a lot of locked-off DLC content where, like, if you're making hard mode something you have to pay for, that's a little gross. The, the, Fig- figure yeah, shit that out. is. Like, like well, I never understand, like, why, like, if you're going to add a mode to it, like, why, why make you pay for it? Like, usually, like, I don't mind, like, when they add it in later on. Like, for example, like, with Returnal, they added a... Uh, what is it called? A boss mode or what? what was yeah, it called? it's called the tower, and like you like it's kind of like a boss rush sort of mode. Well, the, yeah, the thing they did where like you know you have the co op mode. It's just yeah. an update. You know they added it in, and that's that was awesome. People are going back to it. Like this, like people are. Pe- pe- oh, you want a hard mode? I'm mean, like, I don't feel like people are going to be incentivized. Incenti- uh, incentivized. Yeah. Wanting, yeah, wanting to pay for it. And just to be clear, the remastered includes Sonic One, Two, Three, and Sonic CD. So it comes with four games. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a, I believe it's thirty nine ninety nine. So many copies. Yeah. So yeah, thirty nine ninety nine for the standard, and then um, I don't know what these will be for, but like if you pre order, you get a hundred bonus coins, which is like what? Why? What? What is that like going to be for? Yeah, like uh, is there microtransactions in the game now? Like what? Yeah, that that's We're also that clear. Again? And then there's the digital deluxe for forty four ninety nine. And it will be available PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series, S, and X, Nintendo Switch, and PC. There you go. That's all I have to worry about. Why are you making hard mode a paid thing? It seems like really, I imagine that's what most people are upset about is why is hard mm-hmm. mode? Why do I have to pay for that? And also, why are there three packs with the Sonic game? <laughs> Where they're just re-releases, which is strange. Like, you would think a re-release, you just... You re-release the game, you charge them a, a single dollar, and there you go. Like, 50 bucks. You get everything, or something like that. That's what makes it even weirder. This, is, this isn't even new things. It's just they're re-releasing the stuff. Strange. Moving on. Now, Achievers, unfortunately, I can't show this, because, I'll be honest, I don't know how YouTube works, and I don't want to get claimed for this, so I can't show you this. But we're going to be talking about the Skate 4 pre-alpha footage that was leaked. Um, clearly we're not allowed, we're, no, we're not supposed to see any of this, but someone leaked it, so we're gonna talk about it. Now, Alex, you have already watched it, I have also already watched it. Now, this is, um, an achiever, just if you're, like, maybe watching this, let's home along with us. This is clearly from, like, maybe someone is playtesting this or something, uh, and the reason there's pictures everywhere is because they're hiding, uh, numbers, which is basically gonna tell who leaked it, so then mm-hmm. they can get in trouble. But if you look around, uh, Alex... You're a much bigger skate fan than I am, although I do love skate. You yep. you you lived and died and breathed skate for a while there. F- first impressions again. This is pre-alpha, so this is incredibly early in the game. But so far from just me looking at the game, it looks pretty good. What do you think? Oh no, yeah, it it looks it looks awesome. Like I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, whoa, this is like like the way everything was moving. I'm like, you know, let's hope you know that this is. R- like what it's gonna be like like man you could it looks like your momentum is just a lot better and i i enjoy that what they really need to deal is now in uh jeff grubb i actually grabbed this from jeff grubb's twitter because he tweeted out the, the thing what they're trying to nail is the feel now what i well, first off they have a great starting point for me this like this is great this mm-hmm. is great so you keep going yep. with this you need to what i love about skate is you really do feel the weight of your moves Mm -hmm. and i feel like they need to kind of tweak that a little more kind of make it feel a little more weighty like when you do a kickflip you feel the weight when you hit the ground and you kind of get that momentum going like you you kind of feel that almost in your controller too like Mm -hmm. like you you feel when you do a big move and when you land it you kind of feel that thump when you get that thump right and the movement is Mm -hmm. perfect like that's i think what you really need to nail with and when you do that 
you got the rest of the game to kind of expand it on. Yep. And that's all yeah, we got. I, yeah, I, I definitely. I'm wondering. It looks like you like you can like just like I said, the climbing, everything, everything looks a lot better. So I'm yeah. just wondering how much, uh, how different is going to be. Like, like are you, are you going to be are they going to be able to use the music? from before or are they going to make all yeah, new music that's a good that's a good question like i imagine they're going to have to make a whole new soundtrack so like what does that yeah. look like hopefully ea isn't mm-hmm. afraid to you know pay a little bit to get yep. some very because all they got to do is talk to the right people they talk to the right people in skate culture yep. they know what to get so as long as they're yep. talking with the right people they should be fine just gordon expanded on the halo br that we've been hearing about uh that's made by a certain infinity so uh there's a lot of rumors flooding around about the mode certain affinity is working on, which is a battle royale for Halo Infinite. Jess Gordon expanded on them in a tweet stating that Tatanka, which is apparently the name of the mode, is a PvP VE BR, and it started development around spring of 2020, and it seems that it will launch later this year. And this lets uh, 343 focus on the actual multiplayer and story DLC. That is why they gave it to certain affinity. So, because I imagine it's all hands on deck to try and get the core multiplayer where it's supposed to be and the story dlc where it's supposed to be now he does end it with he is not a hundred percent sure of the pve part in the battle royale so it, you know he wants to double check he's actually going to confirm that when he does this podcast xbox 2 um so if you're a fan of just gordon you can check him out there uh alex more and more about halo and of yeah, course I- that we have season two coming out very soon with uh the addition of uh very quickly i'll add to kind of save us time later on because actually this was a story but i can add it to this uh they are adding the um uh three new modes that was confirmed this was leaked but it was confirmed that they're adding the three modes that we covered a few weeks ago king of the hill um land grab and last spartan standing now quickly to add to the last spartan standing that is clearly a like br.5 so what it is is you are 15 players in a big team battle map and you have five respawns and you have a set loadout. So so I, I don't know if the loadouts determine when you start the game or if it's something you choose prior to starting the game. But it's 15 people in a big team royal map. You have five respawns and you see who's the last barn standing. Very cool. Yeah. But Alex, I'm, back to you. The battle royale is supposed to, uh, I'm still worried about it because I'm like, is anybody even wanting this anymore? Because, you know, we had a time where, you know, Battle Royales was really a thing. That's true. Like, now... Is it like, too little too late? I, I understand yeah, what like, you're saying. Is it, it, like, do we really want it? But, like, a lot... At the same time, Halo has been lacking, like, content. Just it's content, like, man. It, it just it got boring. Yeah. But, well, I mean, they were like, too slow, right? Like, we're yeah. just getting Season 2. Yeah. Right? I mean... Like, we just... With, like, it's been months. Now, I mean, we're still waiting for co-op. <laughs> So whenever, that, up, whatever, yeah. whenever that'll happen yeah we just don't know about that forge which is still crazy they didn't launch with forge forge could have solved wow. all of their problems hey you yeah. don't have content there's the content store you go into there hey uh i don't know but fucker 75 made a cool map let's download it things like that like yeah like there are certain if you would have launched with forge i feel like almost all concerns would been thrown away because you could have just had custom games again and then you could figure out like custom game lobbies or something like that. Like, it's a shame they didn't launch with Forge because now they're like catching up rather than staying with kind of the momentum. Like, they're trying to catch up to what people expected out of the Halo versus what we have now, which sucks. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does. Uh, you're like, man, like, this, this could have been better. It's a shame. And this is a quick one. Uh, Switch Online Games seemingly has leaked that 40 games are, are possibly coming to the Switch Online service, and they're going to be Game Boy Advance games. Now, there's a long list of these. I'm not naming all 40, but to quickly, uh, uh, some standouts. Legend of Zelda, Minish Cap, Battle Network, uh, Mega Man from the series. There was Battle Number 2 and 5 I saw, Metroid Fusion, and like I said, a lot more. So if you want a full list, just do a quick search, and you'll find it. Uh, Alex, do you care? Do you, are you a Game Boy guy? This is a quick one. A Game Boy. And so yeah, I had a Game Boy for a long time, but like a, I mean, certain ones that you said, I mean, I I do want to try out. Like I mean, I, I never played Minish Cap. Or, I mean, I want to try Metroid. Like so, I might. Yeah, I Metroid Fusion is the jump, one. I will, 
I will probably jump in and try and try a bunch of these out. Yeah, whenever this adds, which I imagine we're not getting 40 games at once, it'll probably be yeah. like 20, and then they'll slowly add the rest. But mm-hmm. whenever they do add this, I'm fully in. Now, the question is, is it going to be just added? Or is it going to be, like, paid for? So I think it's going to be as long as you have that uh that expansion pack thing that you pay for, like what they did with the Animal You think Crossing it'll DLC. just be that? Yeah, so they'd be like, oh, if you know, you can buy, you can buy it for a certain amount, like, or you you'll have it included as long as you're paying for that service. Right. Okay. Interesting. And um, That's there what was been doing lately with all the the back the NES and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Now I do hope this is soon. I wouldn't mm-hmm. be shocked if we get this in um, June, July time, whenever Nintendo does their Nintendo thing and they do a. Yeah, direct. I, I almost blanked on the name. Whenever they do a direct, I'm sure uh, they will. Because if they already have the emulator up, like they should be pretty close to being done. Yeah. Now to get the actual news for the show, the actual big news. I'm actually excited about this first one, Alex, and I know you are too. Skydance New Media announced today that the studio will be collaborating with Lucas Films to have a new Star Wars game. Now this may be deja vu to some folks out there because Amy Henning formed to that studio and she formerly worked on the Star Wars project with EA called Project Ragtag, which was canceled for seemingly unknown reasons. We don't know why, but you know, you can use your imagination there were some insiders stating that ea wasn't happy with the project blah 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 blah. yeah this will be a second project from the studio that is currently working on back in october skydance announced that they are working on a narrative driven marvel game now if it wasn't clear that lucas films is serious about video games this is now their current uh this is now sitting them at nine current projects in the works with various partners and let's name them all i wrote them all down here here Jedi Fallen Order sequel by Respawn, Star Wars FPS by Respawn, Star Wars Eclipse by Quantic Dream, Skydance's new games that we just covered, open world game by Ubisoft Massive, the Kotar remake, which is, of course, Knights of the Old Republic remake by Aspire Media, Star Wars Hunter by Zynga, which is like an online, uh, like a mobile game, and I think it's coming for Switch too. Return to Monkey Island by Terrible Toy Box, and Indiana Jones by Bethesda. Alice. Hmm. In a, in a short, basically almost a year, maybe two years, we're getting all of those games basically announced and stating that they're coming. Shows of Lucasfilms is very serious about getting back into video games. And, they and are likes, And likes of which we have not seen really since, I mean, really, like what, Nintendo 64 kind of GameCube-ish time where like we, you yeah, got random guess, stuff I like would... Star Wars Empires and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Any, any, a lot of things you would saw, I would say... LucasArts. Yep, all over the place. I mean, leading up really until I kind of ended with Star Wars Force Unleashed, right? Like, and mm-hmm. then Lucasfilms, of course, went away. And we're getting, I mean, technically, we're getting a real release for that. Yeah, they're getting a real release. You can go to, is it Games Limited Games or something like that? They're like re-releasing it or something. I don't know. They, if you, I'm know. sure you can find it cheaper if you want to buy it. It's, uh, you can buy like a crazy special edition if you want it. Yeah, I think it's the games. 15th anniversary something like that it's, it's a big anniversary but uh, aside from all that alice yeah this i mean wow amy henning gets to say no no, no I'm, I'm making a star wars game and it's for real like wow that is really cool and also egg on face with ea that must feel pretty shitty because you you canceled that project that they, that she was gonna uh make yeah that was that's pretty like oof a uh I can't tell. Is that like taking the of uh, F you to them? <laughs> I mean, it kind of feels that way because now yeah. it's just Amy Henning and Lucasfilms making a game versus Amy Henning with EA with Star Wars making games. So now she might even have more control with the project. Who knows how that's going to work out? I'm yeah. very, I mean, I'm very excited for this project. Like, first off, she's making the Marvel narrative game, which I was already excited about back in, I believe, uh, was it November? Or, sorry, October. When it was announced in October, I was like, perfect, awesome. I get to see what Amy Hemi does with whatever character they're going to pick. Now now I have both a Marvel and a Star Wars game to look forward to. Now, I will say, Alex, uh, talking about this, uh, this is a lot of Star Wars, both uh, in-game. So hopefully we don't see any fatigue with Star Wars. I don't think so, just because it's been so long since we've had like a large growth of Star Wars games. I mean, really, I can't. I can't really think. I mean, we had Jedi Fallen Order. We had Lego Star Wars, of course, recently. Aside mm-hmm. from that, I mean, I, can't, I mean, Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 both came out and just... I mean, we all know what happened with them, so... But, yeah, uh, but yeah do you think you'll get any fatigue with this? There's a lot of games, but... No, as long as everything is 
pretty different. Like as long as everything we're getting is 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 I mean like there's nothing that's like oh it's the same game over and over again. Or, yeah, uh, and you, Ubisoft. And it seems like the closest thing we may get to that is the open world mm. game by Ubisoft and Jedi mm-hmm. Fallen Order sequel. Depending on how those go, those might be very similar. Depends on if Ubisoft's going to make it a, you know, do you you get lightsabers in that game? Because that that could get pretty similar to what probably Jedi Fallen Order is going to be, which is probably going to be like a proper open world Jedi game. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely, I guess we'll see. We definitely will. Bloomberg reported that Sega is looking to revive Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio, some of the classic games. Now, Jet Set Radio came out in the 2000s and Crazy Taxi in 1999. Now, this is to note, if you remember, uh, Sega announced a Super Games initiative to develop a reoccurring revenue from games, and the Bloomberg Report kind of cited this as your reasoning. Obviously, seeing the success of some free-to-play games... Uh, Sega wants to chase some of that money. People close to the project told Bloomberg Crazy Taxi has been in development for two to three years and Jet Set is still in early in development. Now this follows Sega's partnership, of course, back in November that they agreed to use the Azure Cloud platform to release its games. Whew. So, yay that you guys are getting, because I, I didn't play any of this. Did you, so, you didn't play any of this? No, I, no, I, no, I tried no. Jet Set Radio a little bit, and it was it was fun. The music was cool. They, they, these I remember the, these games have, like, rabid fans, so I'm happy for the people. Mm-hmm. You're getting your crazy taxes, you're getting your Jet Set Radios. Now, unfortunately, they did say that this seems to be some sort of free-to-play-esque nonsensical like revenue based thing so hopefully they don't ruin it they could make a cool i imagine they could make a cool crazy taxi right with like that doesn't completely destroy the game with some sort of ad, like revenue based transactions in it maybe i mean maybe you, what you probably pay for like customization of your taxi and there's some sort of online mode that you pay for um maybe a- alex uh, i re- if i remember correctly crazy taxi the mode was like an arcade-esque mode where you had to pick up people right and you had to race to like where they were race to get there i think yeah yeah yeah. and then you and you got fares and things like that so like that almost kind of easily transitions to a online platform where maybe you have five people chase to get the most fares or something of that sort so that kind of lends it to it now alex you said you know a little bit more jet set radio what do you how do you what was Um, that game like is that something that you think you could modernize and also add some sort of sure. revenue model to it well yeah because i mean with jetsa radio i mean you went around the course you had the music was playing um but what are you doing i have no idea what this game is are, are you like so, on skateboards or something or? you're on like, you're on rollerblades okay so you're rollerblading yeah. okay and are yeah, you so- skate like skate mode, like you need to get a lot of points or something. So, yeah. you, so you're, you I think your objective of the game is because uh, you have a, a spray, a spray paint can, and okay. you're supposed to get to certain places to spray paint the thing. I mean, I, I could see. be wrong. I, it's, it's been on. No, that sounds. No, I, I remember. I think I saw a Twitch of this, like a Twitch stream. Um, so I think, I think yeah. you're right. But like from what I've seen, I mean, I'm sure they can make like you know just the. The, uh, the details look better, or they. I'm wondering if the music will change. Um, I'm curious if they'll make a, a Splatoon-like mode. I'm just wondering. Well, maybe you paint. Oh, you have to see who paints the most. Yeah, because anytime I play, I saw this game. It reminded me. Uh, think about Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. Yep. But with rollerblades. Okay, that's what I always. No, felt that's like. yeah, that's pretty. I'm sure that's pretty close to what it is. Yeah. Interesting. Now this now since they're in partnership with the azure platform i will not be shocked if these games launch day and date or at least very closely on game pass in some form so we await that alex moving on yes i hope you like the ads and revenue because that's what the next two show uh news stories are about well microsoft wants to bring ad programs to their games sources familiar with the matter told business insider now They have a spokesperson that we're going to read at the end. Uh, Insider reports that Microsoft is aware that these ads are going to potentially be intrusive and bother people. Now, when you when you're thinking ads, right, don't think of like a TV or something where like your game stops and like an ad starts playing. Right. That's not what they're going to try to do. Apparently, they're going to try and 
subtly implement ads in maybe the background one of the examples was they put in an ad on a billboard now i remember i'm reminded of i want to say there was a few maddens that did this where like there was ads like on the little boards like they had companies on them sometimes and i remember certain racing games i want to say it was burnout i don't remember if was it burnout Maybe it was Need for Speed. I don't remember. There was a racing game that that was also the thing. Like, billboards had actual companies on them. Like, they would have, like, Pepsi or they would have, like, Sprite or something. Like, mm-hmm. so, it's this isn't new. Also, if you want to go even further back, I mean, the NES had straight up advertisement games. Like, there was, I think there was a Quaker Oats game. And there, uh, you know, and then there was Pepsi Man, all that garbage. Like, this isn't new. But they're going to try and start and making it to where... So, the reasoning that one of the sources was given... They actually... Microsoft doesn't plan to actually take any money from this. I'll believe that when I see it. But they apparently don't care about the money. They actually want to give it to the actual ad tech company that puts the ad in there. And also, they'll give it to the developers themselves. Now, this was apparently a way to free-to-play people to make more money off the game. So... Under that idea, it doesn't. If you put it in context, that might not be as bad. But let's not forget: in modern advertisements, you the way advertisements is fed to you is off of your data. You have a little internet pla- uh, profile that tells you who you are, and that's how to get the best ads to you, right? So, like, if Alex goes to IKEA and to Home Depot, uh, the ad profile knows. Okay, well, he's looking to build things the next ad he goes when he logs in on you yahoo might be a carpeting site that sells special tools that's just an example so apparently microsoft wants to get into that money because apparently you get a lot of money if you can figure things like that out the ad tech company would then figure out what ads that might put in because if you're getting an ad tech company inside of your game that means they're going to try and specialize the ads to you so it's not going to be quite the same like pepsi man and all the funny things that we could bring up the shtick man if you remember that from the game awards it was very weird <laughs> i think it was named shtick or something like that so this won't be quite the same as the billboard thing because if you're getting an ad tech that means you're very specializing the ads to that person but it could be simplified. It could be just there's one ad in the game and it's on a billboard or something like that. Or maybe there's some sort of, you know, it could be as subtle as a character has a Pepsi badge on them or something. I don't know. It could be so many different things. Now, they also... It's so weird. They also added that Microsoft wants to secure your customer data, which doesn't that sound fun. So they want to secure your data to make it to where they have your data to the customers and you can't... So so the data doesn't go anywhere else. They only have the data to each person. Mm. Before I give it to you, Alex... I could go on and on and say the exact same things I did, but I will just say Sony apparently has the exact same plan. So I apparently is why did this become a thing out of nowhere? The exact same thing because ads make a lot of money, and they and you can make people pay you a lot of money mm-hmm. to be in your game forever. You know what I mean? It's like so. I, I say forever. A lot of this apparently, and I don't. Again, I do not believe this. Apparently, it's only for free-to-play games, or at least limited to most free-to-play games. It did say they want to put it in the Xbox games, so I'll mm. believe it. You know, hopefully, Master Chief doesn't come out with uh, looking like a fucking uh, soccer jersey with like seventy advertisements on them. I don't think that'll happen, but uh, I, I think Microsoft knows they have to be careful with these things, and I think Sony does too. They're both the, yeah. but these are giant companies; they're not dumb. They have a lot of very smart people working with them, especially with dealing with adsense as long as greed does not overtake them it shouldn't be too bad now i don't want ads of course in the games it's fucking annoying but to be fair they've Mm -hmm. been here for a while like it's this isn't the first time we're gonna see ads now if it gets creepy yeah we definitely got to figure something out because ain't nothing creepier than when you do the thing alex where you where you say something with maybe your significant other and then Mm -hmm. two days later you get an ad for it on your phone Oh, dude, that There's nothing creepier the than that. There's nothing that, creepier that ha- than that. That happens all the time. So let's I say, mean, like, in a yeah. completely hypothetical, we already know Sony records your audio. We know that. They've said that. 
Yeah. But we, and I'm sure Microsoft has some high tech thing that basically does the same thing. So now what if they scrub words and know that this profile has said the word baby X amount of times, meaning that maybe that their wife is pregnant and Hey, let's give them ads for baby products. Now that's a complete hypothetical that I pray to God won't happen, but that is an example of terrible shit that this could come from. So keep it in the back of your mind. If it becomes intrusive, be prepared to not buy games for a while. Cause you know, we don't want, we don't want that to happen. We don't want these people scrubbing what you're saying and getting ads to you. Cause guarantee you that could happen. No, for sure. That, yeah. I mean, that it's happening with, I mean, like you said, with it just, it happens now. Like uh, my uh, brother and I were talking about like a, a turn type of like a electric scooter. And uh, it, like we were just talking about it, and I don't know where he went. It, it pops up on his phone, like I even, uh, even it was even a TikTok about one. I was like, "What? How yeah. did that even happen?" Yeah, and I've heard the arguments where like that's cookies working, so like cookies from websites leaving on your phone, telling like the app that you've been to certain websites. So it could, talking about it, it could, we haven't even looked anything. That's up. what I'm saying. I've heard yeah. that argument, and I just. I'm, I just don't believe it because I have yeah. had situations where I've just talked about a thing and it has come up. I forget what it was. I want to say when I was looking to buy a new TV. No, mm -hmm. it was to buy a new entertainment center. Okay. Something like that. It was it was a household product that I had not searched prior. I think it was maybe a coffee table. Okay. And the next day I had a fucking co it was creepy, man. I had a coffee table ad on front of my um was it yahoo or something it was something like that it 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 was just it's creepy it's creepy and also it it's your it. it's your phone like it's meant to listen to you whatever quickly to add uh saints row has released a customization trailer showing off a large suite of customizations and i could name millions of things for you but i'm just gonna name a couple standouts so the asymmetrical faces huge differences in colors for your hair skin types scars you can use cross changer clothes so clothing is just optional for everyone like you can just put on whatever you want there's a lot more inside of customizations inside of your own character you can tweak each little piece color of your little uh outfit and Everything. things of that thing yeah you can have highlights in your hair you can do all sorts of stuff the also applies to guns and your cars you can get very granular with the rims change the colors of your rims you can change the color of the actual car you can change your gun you can make specific um i don't want to say camo alex but like patterns and you can put them on yeah, guns no, you're, yeah you're, you're like gun, orange you're gun yeah you like orange and or white yeah, color just call it a gun skin or something yeah yeah the, you can get super crazy with that you can color specific parts of the gun you can get crazy and you also have uh, are going to have a mansion in the game that you can also customize and you can make your yeah, it's like, house, like your home base yeah you can make your house like crazy looking cool um alex I've been pretty down on the game. You've been pretty mm -hmm. meh on the game. Did this change any opinion for you? So, actually, yeah. I mean, I was... Um, when I was uh, watching this, I was like, you know, this actually looks cool. You know, like, I'm, I'm actually excited to see what they're going to do with the story because that's usually what I, I look for. But like customization wise, I'm like, or I'm like, this is I. It, you're pretty much making everything customizable, and I actually enjoyed that. Okay, I will say this is the first time I've walked away from something from Saints Row and have been excited. So yeah. everything yeah. prior to this, I just something about it was just I just didn't like it. Yeah. With this trailer, I actually walked away with okay. They at least seem to have the customization down. The customization seems thorough. It seems almost like they went out of their way to uh, a lot of things to make sure you can do kind of literally whatever you want to your character. Yeah. And I am excited about the customization of the game. Now, I want to see more of the actual story and I want to see more of the actual core gameplay of what I'll be doing. But. Mm -hmm. This trailer, I do walk away with being, okay, I am excited to see more. I want to see more, and I want to see, again, I want to see that, I want to see that, uh, that story. Is the story cool? Am I going to have cool people to fight against? Is there, is there any story? Am I, 
there's so many questions that I still have. So I am walking away with way more positive than I have been before, where I have just kind of made fun of almost everything they've done with uh, how weird their guns sounded at the beginning, like how strange that was and et cetera, et cetera. I could go on, but I am walking yep. away pretty positive. No, same. I believe I, I make I'm it gives me hope for this game. Alex, this is just a strange thing I wanted to quickly bring up. IGN posted a story that was kind of wrong, but also not wrong. But like, it was very strange that they even okay. posted this. So, so there's a, there was a tweet from a um just a random person that asked uh, Christopher Barrett, um, which is a former like head of the studio. I want to say, hold on, let me get his actual listing. But basically, they asked a former employee, which hasn't worked on Destiny since, like, Destiny 1 or something like that, if there's a Easter egg uh, for their next game in the uh, in Destiny 2 right now, and he just said yes. <laughs> and it seemed like he was just fucking with them, but IGN wrote, like, a whole thing about this, saying, like, is, is does it actually contain it? And then he said uh, uh, he did an emoji of a moon, and people were like, oh, it might be on the moon and stuff, and what was oh funny is what was what was funny is they like took this stick and just ran with it yeah and seemingly uh none of this is real <laughs> like i i don't like he hasn't worked on this in a very long time so he wouldn't know unless he has some sort yeah. of friend inside or something like that so it was very it was strange to see that out of nowhere like i was just chilling and i was like oh like a uh, uh because it did say he still worked on it. Um, people were saying, like, oh, he still works on the... Like, like as if he still works there. Yeah. And I was like, mm, he doesn't... He doesn't work there. Work there anymore, yeah. He hasn't yeah. worked there in... Let me get it for you right now. He left... Yeah, he was an art director. So, he wasn't even, like... It's not like he was, like, doing gameplay stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but he left... Oh my god, the ads are crazy. We're gonna we're just gonna say I think it was D1. I think he left before Destiny 2 even launched, I wanna okay. say. So I just wanted to bring that up as a wow. They let that fall through the cracks. Cause they definitely mentioned as if it was real. Yeah, people have to not take everything like so literal. Right. Because he like, literally said yes and people were like, oh shit. Here we go. Yeah, like here we go. And we, is it gonna happen? And then Google his name just to make sure he still works there, <laughs> which is yeah, awesome. It's, it's that's awesome. hilarious. It's, it's, I mean, it's pretty funny, right? Um, mm. I I don't want to stay on that any longer. It was just funny to bring up. Like, whoops, you fucked up. And hey, we all do it, right? The day updates are very short for you this week. No More Heroes Three is coming uh, this fall to PS4, PS5, and Xbox. By the way, which is very cool. No one here is three. That was only a Switch game. And Digimon Survive will launch July 28th. Switch, PS4, Xbox Series S, and X, Xbox One, and Steam. Alex, that's all your data base for the week. That is a pretty. It, this is a pretty short episode this week. Not too yeah, much man. to talk about. So we're gonna close it. And we we'll take a little longer with queued up. Just spend more time with the achievers. Uh, and of course, Alex, I ask you mm. a singular question, just like I start the show every single week. And we end the show the same way. What do you have queued up? Now, this, of course, can be a game, some sort of TV show, a comic, a book, anything. A Alex, this isn't just for you, of course. This is for mm. the Achievers at home. What do you have queued up for the weekend? Let us know in the comments below. Tweet at us. Anything above. What do you have yes. queued up for the week, Alex? Um, so, I finished my next Souls game. I beat Dark Souls 3. Debating if I want to do another playthrough of it so I can get the last ending that I need. But I was like, you know what? Uh, let me. I'm gonna go in a, in a in a rotation. So I'm gonna do each one at once, and then maybe go back to it later again, one more time. So my next one is Sekiro. Mm. So because I actually got screwed over and never beat you the did. game. You did. I yeah. Uh, I missed a whole part. You followed. The you followed the Iron Code, which is not what you're mm. supposed to do. You're supposed to yeah. break the Iron Code. Yep. And it, yeah, it screwed me over. So I never got to beat him. I never got the chance to even try uh, the Demon of Hatred, which I, I, I want to try it because how hard it is. I mean, like, um, I just I feel like I feel like I, I can get him. I just I, I want to try. Yeah. Um, 
Other than that, I just started watching Vinland Saga. It's a Viking uh, anime series. It's so far, it only has one season. I'm literally almost done with it. I started it this morning, but it's like you know, it's an anime, so it's only like twenty minutes each uh, episode. Really cool. I recommend that. And the other, I'm trying to catch up on shows because I've been just on uh, video games oh, for a while. So I was like, I'm behind. Uh, I'm I'm on. I'm behind shows. Mm. Yeah, I finally so I like, caught up yeah. with my stuff. So I, of course, well, a long time ago, finished Attack on Titan. That was a while ago. But I'm, yeah. I'm taking the time with the shorter time period to kind of revisit things. I, I caught back up with my hero, completely caught up with the dubbed. I usually wait for dub stuff just because I have so much to watch. So I, I usually just watch yep. the dub. When the more dub comes out, I watch that, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So I caught up with that. I'm going to go. Oh, and me and uh, my wife watched Batman. That was great. I had a fun nice. time with the Batman. I really enjoyed um um that movie it's it it's probably my it's either my second or third favorite batman movie it, it might be nice. it might be on the third yeah dark yeah, knight is wife, too good yeah yeah my wife and i are actually gonna watch it uh this weekend so oh, cool. I, i'm i am excited i am excited for you you'll, you'll have a good time yep aside from that no really plans i've gone back to sweden five just because it's been too long so i'm playing that currently mm-hmm. having a having a great time Great time revisiting yeah. some games. Thinking about revisiting some older games. Maybe Kingdom Hearts. I haven't done a playthrough in a while. Maybe mm. maybe jump on Kingdom Hearts 1. I slowly chip away at the 1,000 gamer score for Kingdom Hearts 1. Because it's yeah. uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 isn't terrible. You just have to beat the game like... Isn't like, it like a couple times? Four times in total, depending on I how you so. do it. I think you can optimize it and only do it in three. Because yeah. I need to do the... Beat the game without changing your equipment. And I need to do the beat it under, I think it's six hours or something like that, or eight hours. It's something. So I need to do those. So I need to sit down and just yeah. try, like, blaze through the game as fast as possible and try and get those done. Aside from that, I don't really have anything else planned. It's really just, let's see what games come out. We don't really have anything of huge note. Everything's kind of smaller. So when those games come out, we'll play them as they come. Aside from that, I'm pretty much done. Alex, hey, anything you want to leave with the audience? Um, um, I wanted to say um, appreciate the people who are commenting on our videos. It, it's awesome. I always like I always like uh, having conversations. Yeah, like we, we don't. had a recent comment with Elden Ring, and hey, that was fun. Yeah, we don't normally uh, advertise this, but we literally have. A notification every time we get a comment so we check yep. every single comment if there's a comment we look at it even the spam yep. ones and those ones yep. pretty hilarious but if you're an actual pretty commenter hilarious. and you comment on the thing we will see it guaranteed yep so yep. we always i we have a pretty much 100 percent reply rate we we talk to everybody so we, we i think the other day i had a comment on some spoiler cast like three years ago or something like that. some some crazy it was like a year ago i don't remember what it was mm-hmm. it was some random comment i was like wow it, it, you could tell the algorithm served you up this like random video so i talked yeah. to them for a little bit too but yeah yep. we're always in the thing i should i'll start trying to add that into the little uh beginning of the show because I, I feel like people really don't know because you know you're used to kind of commenting on something and no one ever comments back or something on youtube because people no, don't sure. really look at comments anymore but I yeah. literally, again, we read them all. So, but yeah, yep. we appreciate it. Also, our videos. This is probably our best. This is either our first or second best uh, performance ever in the channel's history. So, thank you for all so much for that. I think it only. I think it's getting pretty close to when we aven- uh, released the first Hassan Caramen breakdown. Like that was <laughs> yeah. that was our first kind of huge. Uh, uptick in, in viewers and this is the second time that's happened so we appreciate all the new listeners thank you so much yep yeah uh, thank you guys as, aside from that alex yes i'm gonna let you go for the week i'll see you next week now achievers yes. don't forget go achieve go achieve